Hello and welcome to another tutorial by Aro Hamidia. This is going to be a tutorial where we'll differentiate between the bouncing of the balls depending on their material attributes. So, let us start. Here you can see three balls made of different materials. The one in the center is a metal ball. The one in the right is a cotton ball and the one on the left is a rubber ball. We'll adjust the size and the positions of the balls with free transform tool as per needed. Notice that each ball is placed on their individual layer. To start with the rubber ball animation, we have already kept the remaining layers locked so that we'll not accidentally disturb any one of them. In the timeline, Extend the length up to 44 frames. Moving towards the rubber ball, select it, insert a keyframe on the 10th frame. As previously studied, go to the Properties tab and assign Motion Twin to it. Reduce the Ease in value to minus 100. On the 10th frame, shift the ball's position to ground level. Check the movement. As we know, the rubber ball's characteristics, we'll have to add some more bounces to give it a realistic feel. Add one more keyframe on 14. Give motion twin and switch on the onion skin option. You can check out the onion skin option below the timeline bar. Adjust the onion skin markers so that we can see all the frames of the movement of the ball. Now we see the object clearly on the selected frame. Rest of them are lightly visible. Here you can see that the onion skin is helping us in deciding the bouncing height of the ball. Check the movement. Here we need to give 100 ease out to the selected frame. Ease in and ease out are the needful values we'll have to add during the motion twin. Going towards minus 100 value, that is downwards, is supposed to be ease in, which helps in creating the motion slow to fast. And moving towards 100 value, that is upwards, is supposed to be ease out, which helps in creating the motion fast to slow. Again, check the movement of the ball after adding the ease in, ease out values. It's working well now. Extend the motion frames as seen in the video. For that, press F5. OK. Switch on the onion skin and we shift the ball a little upwards on the last key. Going ahead, Insert a keyframe on frame 27. Apply motion twin and again the ball is to be placed on the ground level. Keeping onion skin on and zooming in helps in matching the same registration point as on the second keyframe. Once placed right, give ease in of minus 100. Remember to apply ease in when ball is moving towards ground and ease out when it is moving upwards. Same way, we'll keep on adding some more keyframes along with motion twin to give a good bouncing effect. On the 35th keyframe, adjust the ball's position so that it is a little lower than the previous position, which is in the air. Don't forget to give it some ease out. Keep playing the animation after every change to check if things are going right or not. Also, keep referring to the video. Now, to get back the ball on the ground, add one more keyframe on frame 42. Go with the same procedure and match the position. You'll notice that we need to switch on the onion skin option 
every time. It's time for ease in. Now it's working well. Some more bounces will get us a more realistic feel. For that, insert an additional keyframe on frame 48. Place the ball exactly as shown in the video using the up arrow key on the keyboard. Next, it's time for ease out. Now we can see that we need to extend some more frames in the timeline. Going ahead, add a keyframe on frame 56. Apply motion twin. Switch on onion skin and bring it back to the ground level. Here, it matches the ground level registration point. When you play the animation, you will see that it's time for ease in again. Minus 100. You can always check the motion from start to bottom. We need to add one more keyframe. Doing the same thing again, that is, applying the motion twin, switching on the onion skin and giving the ball a new position. And also, the ease out value should be added. We are getting a good result, but some more keyframes are needed to improve it. We need to add one more keyframe. Adjust the ball on the ground level again. Notice how we are adding the number of bounces depending on the material of the ball. As here, it is particularly specified as a rubber ball. We could need some more number of bounces. So, let us add one more keyframe and repeat the procedure. Next keyframe on 78th frame and brings it back to the same ground level position. Keep checking ease in ease out values. On the 82nd frame, we are adding one more keyframe. Also, adding motion twin and adjusting the position of the ball with the help of the onion skin mode. Add keyframe on frame 86, add motion twin again, and the ball to be moved downwards as seen in the video. Here, do notice that later as the distance between the ball and the ground reduces, the distance between the two keyframes is also reducing. All depends on the slowing down of the bouncing effect. We are placing keyframes closer to each other than the earlier ones. Extend the timeline up to 100 and add two more keyframes at frames 89 and 92. Add motion twin and now we have to only adjust the position of the ball on the 89th keyframe. It will be placed slightly above the ground level as shown in the video because the bouncing of the ball has almost stopped and the ball has slowed down. It's time for ease in and ease out. Check the animation. Add one more keyframe in between the last motion twin to give the last bounce effect. Keep checking the movement playing the animation as seen in the video. Now we need to extend some more frames. Let's add one more keyframe on the 107th frame and shift the ball to the left side at some distance. Also, rotate the ball at some angle on the last keyframe. Finally, play the animation and you will understand that the ball we just animated has the feel of a rubber ball which is very bouncy. Here, we are finished with the rubber ball animation. Now, let's move to the metal ball animation. For that, lock the rubber ball layer and unlock the metal ball layer. Okay. Here we go. Add a new keyframe on the 7th frame. Create motion twin from the properties 
and place the metal ball on the ground on the seventh keyframe with the help of the down arrow key. This will give a straight movement to the ball. As the metal ball is also moving downwards, will give ease in value of minus 100. That means the ball will travel slow to fast towards the ground. We are checking the movement now. Shift the keyframe to the 6th frame and insert a new keyframe on the 8th frame. Apply a motion twin again and slightly move the ball above the ground level on the last keyframe. As we check the motion, we'll shift the keyframe from the 8th frame to the 9th. To bring the ball back, insert a keyframe on the 11th frame. Do as earlier. Add a motion twin on the onion skin and place the ball back to the ground level. Remember that this is a metal ball. It won't bounce like the rubber ball. In fact, it will not bounce at all. When we play the animation, we can make out the difference between the weight of rubber ball and the weight of the metal ball. We'll set 100 as ease out value for second movement and minus 100 as ease in value for the third movement of the metal ball. Now that we have animated the metal ball, we'll move towards the ground layer. Unlock it and add a keyframe on the ground level, exactly where the metal ball has its first bouncing keyframe, that is on 6th frame. Also add one more keyframe just next to it. And now only the ground level on the second keyframe will be shifted slightly, very slightly downwards. We have done this shift to create the effect of the ground shaking on the impact of the metal ball, as you will see in the animation. And here, we have successfully animated the rubber ball and the metal ball. Next, we move on to the cotton ball. So let us start. First of all, lock the other layers except the cotton ball layer. As with the other balls, we'll animate the cotton ball keeping in mind its weight. You can see here that the metal ball reaches the ground faster in comparison with the rubber ball because it is heavier. Now we know that the cotton ball is much lighter than the rubber ball. So, we'll add the second keyframe further than the rubber ball, which is on the 11th frame. Add motion twin and move it on the ground. The next keyframe on the 18th frame and again add motion twin. Now place the cotton ball as seen in the video and add the ease in ease out values. Now to get the ball back insert one more keyframe on frame 23. Applying the same motion twin and placing it again as shown in the video. Give minus 100 as an ease in value. Now to add one more bounce to it, insert a keyframe at frame 30. Add motion twin and give 100 as ease out value. Switch on the onion skin here. Place it according to its previous position. You can see now that each ball is bouncing according to its weight. On frame 35, add one more keyframe. Add motion twin. Switch on the onion skin and place it on the ground level. Ease in to be added by minus 100. Play the animation. We can now see the three balls with different materials. The animation looks quite convincing, but there are some more actions we can add for the rubber ball and also for the cotton ball to make the animation even better. At first, let's start with rubber ball. Except the rubber ball layer, lock all the remaining layers. As per its material property, what we'll do is squash and stretch the ball at the particular keys, mainly where it hits the ground. So, go to frame number 10, that is its second keyframe and add two keyframes. One will be just before the keyframe and second one just after the keyframe. 
Here, you see two additional keyframes on the 9th and the 11th frame. Now let us follow the video. Go to the key on 10th frame. With the help of the free transform tool, squash it vertically and stretch it horizontally. You'll see that it gives the animation a more realistic feel. On frame number 9, stretch and squash the ball as shown in the video. Now do the same for the keyframe on 11th frame. Keep playing the animation to see what effect we are getting from it. Check the ease in ease out values as we have added new keyframes between the motion twin. Go to the next keyframe where the ball hits the ground and add two keyframes on both sides of the keyframe just as we did earlier. Press F6 for adding the keyframes. Again stretch the ball vertically for the frame numbers 26 and 28. For the key on frame number 27, squash the ball vertically and stretch horizontally. When working on the stretch and squash, make sure that you maintain the volume of the ball and that it does not grow in size. Now let's go to frame number 42, where the ball hits the ground next. Repeat the same actions. Add new keys on frames 41 and 43. Stretch and squash the ball at the 41st and 43rd frames. Check the path of the ball on frame number 42 using the onion skin and now squash and stretch at frame number 42 it's time to move to frame number 56 we added two keyframes beside it squash the ball at 56 and stretch the ball at 55 and 57 like we have done before We are repeating the procedure wherever the ball comes in contact with the ground. Two more keyframes added next to frame number 68. Squash the ball at 68 and now let's see how the animation is turning out. Don't forget to check the ease in ease out values wherever you added the keys. The animation is coming out good after the ease in and ease out is adjusted. Let's move towards the cotton ball. Give the same treatment to it. Here also, we'll consider the weight and material of the ball while stretching and squashing. Unlock the cotton ball layers and lock the layers. Add two new keys on 10th and 12th frames as the cotton ball hits the ground on the 11th key. Squash the ball on the 11th frame as shown in the video and stretch it on frame number 10 and 12. Give ease out value of 100 to frame number 12. Keep in mind that we are using the stretch and squash in such a way that it will suit the material of the ball. It will obviously be different from the rubber ball. Secondly, we have also worked on the timing of the ball animation considering its material as well as its weight. Cut off some of the frames at the end of the motion twin as the cotton ball will not bounce as much as the rubber ball because it is softer. Coming back, add keys on frame numbers 22 and 24. On frame number 23, let's squash the ball again 
as it's bouncing slightly. Follow the instructions in the video. No need to stretch at 22 and 24 now, as we are going to make the ball settle. For that, insert a keyframe at frame 34. Give motion twin and squash the ball a little at frame number 32. See the video and follow the instructions. Let us now add a key on frame number 36. The treatment of the weight of the ball is the real factor that affects the animation. Now let us check the animation. Let's make some more changes to improve the animation. Notice that the rubber ball is not rotating where it should be. So, let's work on that now. Double click and go inside the rubber ball symbol. Extend the frames up to 100. Select the ball and create one more graphic symbol of that and name it rubber ball in. We have extended the frames so add a keyframe at frame 100. Add motion twin. Here insert one more keyframe at frame 50. Click on the frames and in the properties tab you'll find rotation option. Select the CW option which means it will rotate clockwise. Play and see the ball is rotating clockwise smoothly. Double click and again go inside the graphic of the ball. You can see the highlighted area on the ball. Let us remove that. Again, come out to the symbol and add a new layer. Create the same highlighted area on this new layer. Select the radial option from the color palette, choose the colors and modify the alpha values as shown in the video. Draw a circle on the new layer as per the highlight size. Remove the outline and adjust the placement of the highlight again as seen in the video. This highlighted portion will always be on the top layer. Remember that even if the ball keeps rotating, the highlight will stay in the same place throughout the animation. Exit the entire symbol mode and see the ball rotating properly. Here, select the complete layer of the rubber ball, right click on the layer and click on the synchronize symbols. This synchronize symbols stands for the number of keys you have in your current layer. It will match up with the frame numbers inside that graphic symbol. Play and check out the animation of the rubber ball. Let us cross check the frame numbers of the keys from the properties panel and make sure they are correct. Also see if they are in a loop or not. While playing we see the rubber ball bouncing and rotating in a proper manner. And the frame numbers are also right. We have done the animations for all three balls with different materials. In this assignment we studied two things, weight and timing. Both are very important factors in the quality of the animation. Both the things depend on the weight and material of the object. Objects with more weight will bounce less. Once you have done this exercise, you can experiment with different materials and how they will react when they are dropped on the ground. Thank you.